Hey guys, super excited to show you uh, these bikes today uh, from a 2020 CRF 110 with some BBR goodies to a fully blown out 2022 CRF 110 with a ton of BBR goodies to my 2022 KLX 140 um, with just some shock and uh, fork internals from BBR. It's just really cool seeing how these bikes have transitioned. Uh, this bike, especially, it's taken a lot of work for me to put it together and just finding the parts to make it rear disc uh, compatible. And we'll go through that. We'll have a video of this bike from when we started to it today. And uh, we'll also have a video for you guys also that will be below that we posted last week on handlebar sizes. Uh, since I'm sort of new to the pit bike world, um, I had a big problem trying to figure out what size bars fit me the best. I'm six foot um, and it's just sort of feels weird having different size bars. So I think I have a pretty good feel for the bars on these bikes. And that video, if you wanna know dimensions, widths of all Renthal to ODI to Pro Taper bars to Carson's Brown's uh, 910 series bar, um, watch that video from last weekend, really good video, and we'll answer a lot of your questions to hopefully save you time and energy, like what I had to do and Google everything, and then buy them and figure out what actually felt the best. Um, and speaking of that, we could touch on that real quick though, without going into numbers, but uh, Carson Brown with BBR did a great job on these. They're, they're a little bit more flat, um, for example, like with these, these are 797s. You can see um, these are much flatter bar, which I really like. It reminds me more of like a full size, like, you know, Kate, like a 450 bar um, or a full size bike bar. And you can see all these taper back down. They're a little bit taller. Um, so again, it's gonna be your personal preference, but watch the other video for that. Um, they just did an amazing job uh, designing these and then having these come in production. Uh, what's cool too is they then come in a really cool box. Just BBR, I gotta say, has been an amazing company to work with. Um, the parts and everything have been great. Um, with no issues bolting them together, especially with like the baseline parts. Um, so let's, let's just go through that and then we'll go through each bike and uh, we'll go from there. So um, for this 2020, uh, we rebuilt the wheel set. We did put in their uh, springs and their dampeners. Um, and then another important thing when you guys do uh, the, the shock, or sorry, fork builds, is gonna be wet oil. So if you're a bigger dude, you might wanna go with like a 20 weight. Uh, Maxima has a 10, I believe a 15 and a 20. Um, so if you're 200 pounds riding these bikes, I'd probably go with the 20. Um, if you're 130, 140, pounds, maybe go with a 10 and 15 would be sort of a good in between. Um, and that's just going to help you out for compression and uh, help you out for the spring. Uh, this is running, both these bikes are running the Elka 4 shock, um, really cool uh, shock. And this one here, let's see, I think it's right here um, with the adjustment and stuff, right? And uh, that one we put in a different location than this. You can see it here on this bike. Uh, just worked out better for that one. Um, we did the Pro Circuit Pipe. This is their older style. They actually came out with a new style by BBR. Um, that's supposed to have less welds and a little bit better geometry. So I don't even know if they're offering this one anymore. Uh, but a year or two ago, that's what they initially had. Um, and it works great. Um, easy to dial in the suspension. The suspension, I would say, if you're an adult, you're gonna wanna do first with these. Well, probably the bar would be the first thing, and then suspension. Um, that alone's gonna help you more than motor, in my eyes, personally. Um, the bars that we're running on this is an XR50 bar. They're a little bit shorter, about the same height as the 910s, but shorter. 
Uh, I'll probably end up putting on, now that I have those, uh, the BBR 910 bars, I'll probably put those on this bike so they both feel really similar. No sense in jumping on one bike to another and then having them feel different. Um, what I like about these two, they're about 32 inches um, in length, so they're the same length as a full-size motocross bike. So if you're using this for fun, it's a lot easier to go from a big bike to small bike when your geometry is about the same. Um, it's same with anything like a weapon platform or anything else that you do, you're gonna want something that's gonna be really similar when you go from bike to bike because it's just one less thing for you guys to feel different on. Um, so I'll probably do that with that bike as well. This is just a really good height. That's really close for the same height, but just a different, uh, different width. Um, what else did we do on this bike? That's really it for the overall main points of the bike. It just rides a lot better with the suspension. Um, yeah, and that's about it. We did put the ASV lever on here. Um, it just gives it a little bit better feel. You uh, can still run the stock uh, cabling for the bike, uh, switching out the springs. So it doesn't really make the height difference. Uh, this bike height wise, stock is 26 inches. When you go to doing the pro comp front and rear, um, you'll raise the bike with this seat, the aftermarket BBR seat foam, um, it goes to about 33 inches. So a big difference in height going from that geometry. Um, you can tell this, all these swing arms are down. Sorry, the um, matrix bike stands are down, they're not up. And so this, the bike is touching the ground. So that gives you a pretty good natural height on it. And you can see with this down what, what the height difference is for the two bikes. So it does, it does make a difference. These bikes from the uh, stand up sit the same, but you can see here with the stock seat, with just redoing the, to a seat gripper, I personally would recommend going with the BBR foam and the full seat. They sell us as a complete seat. I think they sell it in this color for the CRF 110 and in black. And if you guys are looking for a deal, I do have a KLX 110 seat from BBR that's unused. I ordered, I thought they had a KLX 140 seat for this because I wanted to have it raised, but they don't make a 140, they only make a 110. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, just message me um, on Instagram or whatever, and I could uh, get you the pricing on that and ship it to you. Uh, what else? Um, now going on to this bike, uh, there's really not big, any big differences with the 2020 to the 2022. I believe even the plastic's the same, um, but this bike took us a lot of time to get stuff. Now, I think you get the forks, um, this whole front end. Um, we originally waited for it for several months, but it was worth the wait. Um, I think we we're one of the first ones to get it this um, last year in the spring of uh, 2022. Um, and we haven't ridden this bike yet we're pretty much done with it. So we still have to put the grips on, things like that, and then dial in the suspension. But for 2,300, I think the retail cost is, you get these uh, nice uh, triple trees, uh, the forks, um, card, I think these are 37 millimeter inverted forks. Uh, you get the whole brake system. So very nice with the rotor and everything. Complete wheel without the tire. Um, we put the MX33s on it, uh, the axle and everything. So pretty much the whole front end except for the plastic and bars. Um, you do need to order a longer cable for the front. Uh, you do need to, let's see what else. This, if you look here, we had to flip this upside down. I think this is with their longer cables for the throttle cables. And we still had to put this upside down for the 910 bars. So hopefully they'll come up with even longer throttle cables to accept the 910 bars. Um, this is the BBR code here. So you have it for the longer ones to work with these, uh, the front forks. I don't remember what this was, but if you call BBR, they're great. They'll tell you which ones to run. Um, and uh, what else do we do? Again, like we discussed, the BBR 910 bars are perfect. Um, the motor, since I'm running this in the backyard, we didn't want to touch the motor or the uh, exhaust. So even though we put an exhaust on that one, it is louder. So we want to stay with this new build. 
um, with the stock exhaust and motor. We did put on their pegs. Um, you can get these through um, BBR as well. Uh, the BBR gear shift lever. Um, the reservoir for the rear disc we put here. Um, we just had a hard time trying to find it and it just routed through there and fit in there pretty snug. So I don't think we'll hit that with our legs. Um, we'll see once we test it. We're still, and these are little things that you have to work on when doing these, you guys. Like it's, it's even though you're buying these kits, you still have to fab or find parts to make it work. You know, this would work fine with the stock wheel, but since we are doing an all out build, we might as well put a rear disc on, right? So it has this hole for it. We just got to get a mount to have this cable. This needs to just get pulled back a little bit so it comes off the motor. And um, we'll be doing that. I just need to find one online. That'll work. Um, this bracket worked out really well. I believe the uh, caliper and master, the whole system is a KX80 uh, rotor. And then we had to have this ordered, um, custom size for the brake line. Uh, let's see here. The rear wheel is not gonna match the front. For the front, they only had that uh, style front rim. And I don't know if they call it, it's a different paint. It almost looks like a mass finish. But now I guess you could order a uh, shiny black rim instead of that material. I like it, I just can't find it like Acceler. Nobody makes that style rim finish. Um, so unfortunately the rims don't match, but you know, we're still, they're still black. So we can't be perfect in everything. Um, Hans center, uh, hub. So we love Hans. We've used them a lot with our race bikes. Um, we did the BBR chain. So it's sort of cool, it has a gold chain. Um, this is another thing guys, it's, it's just hard when you're piecing together stuff like, we did the Vortex Brocket, fits perfect with the hub. And I had to go to the hardware store for the, um, these aren't set in where it's, where usually these would be flush. This is a, these holes are flat. Um, so now with this, I want, I want this to be in the middle. So as the chain gets stretched more, I have at least a couple bars to go back to. But with these being so large, they're hitting my chain stay. Um, so I still can't ride this bike. Um, I can't anyway really with my shoulder, but I'm going to at least ride it around, you know, the house and see how it feels once I'm done. So right now I'm just in the process of now having to find, um, different size bolts that will work with the chain stay. Uh, but you can see really nice chain stay by BBR. Um, this is really smart in how they developed this. When they were testing this originally, they had a lot of guys breaking this mount here um, from doing big jumps and everything else. So they built this all one piece billet aluminum and it's adjustable. And I don't know, can you see that in there Massimo where there's multi points of adjustment? Oh yeah. So you can adjust this height wise. Um, I am doing this particular height because they said that's the perfect setup for the pro comp front end. So we want to have it look right, feel right, ride right, and um, the geometry looks to be perfect with how we have this set. Um, you have a really nice, uh, besides the rear chain guide, uh, case protector. Um, they just do really nice work. Uh, if you guys have um, the right length, I think this is 13 inches or so, um, I'm looking to put a kickstand on this just because when you're out in the desert and things like that, it'll just be nice instead of laying the bike down um, or leaning against stuff. Uh, if you guys know a good stand that will work on this, I'm thinking maybe the KLX 140F since it's a taller one. Uh, maybe I'll just go to the dealership and measure it on the showroom floor. And if it's the right length, this piece, if you look, is the same as what Kawasaki runs, or at least it looks like it. So I'm going to take that off if it fits. And uh, the taller version of this, which is their F model, then I'll use that one on this bike. Might as well, right? Um, at least the same color paint and everything. Um, what else did we run into this? Well, you're going to see, we're going to do a different video and it'll probably be posted in the next couple weeks on this bike soup to nuts from when we started to where we are today. And it'll just be based on this bike. 
Um, and that'll be really cool because you'll see what we did through the process and what we had to do. You know, there's a few things here and there that we had to cut or make it work um, to fit everything in there. Um, super easy, but good for you guys to know in case you're wanting to go to the Pro Comp uh, rear and what to expect um, and what we did to make it as an easy install. Uh, going on to the 22, uh, 2022 KLX 140. Um, this bike, really, we just put on the ODI bars. Again, that's probably one of the first things you're gonna do. These are called the 110 bars by ODI. Um, I think they fit really good on the bike. I think these are, let's see, we're at 31s. Yeah, they're about 31. So almost full size. And uh, it feels really good. The height feels good on this with the stock seat. So I definitely would recommend this size bar for this bike. Um, we really haven't touched anything else except putting the exhaust on. We did the um, BBR springs and then heavier fork uh, oil. Um, that greatly helped the bike because otherwise it feels like, feels like a pogo stick. If you're an adult riding this bike, um, you definitely have to do the suspension. And then we did a heavier rear shock spring by BBR as well. And it just made it so much nicer to ride. Um, one thing too, I want to sort of go over with these bikes. Um, I get it if you're just wanting a CRF 110 because everybody else has it um, to ride. But if you're buying a CRF 110 thinking it's going to be a super fun bike to ride, they're, they're really small bikes. Um, so if you're just buying it as an adult and you're not going to be competing in the, like the CRF 110 classes and things like that, um, and you're going to have to do all these mods, you might as well buy a KLX 140. Um, these are four speed auto auto. So you don't have a clutch, um, which is cool. But if you're going to have somebody learn and they could fit on like a KLX 140, I would do that because they're instantly going to learn how to use a clutch. This is a five speed manual with a clutch. Um, it's a big, big benefit. Um, all these bikes are auto starts, which are amazing. I mean, it's just super easy. This one doesn't have a backup kickstand. The CRF 110s do, um, but I've had no problems with, I keep them on battery tender, it's super easy. Um, you just put gas in and they go. Like that's what's great about these four strokes. Um, but if your kid's just learning or you as an adult just want a smaller bike for fun and tooling around on a whatever, it's a, it's a great bike overall because the 140, by time you put in all this money in here to get disc brakes, now that bike is almost the size of this bike. I think that ends up being 32, and this is about 33 in height, so they're, they're really close. Um, bar, even the bar height, this is a little bit taller, but you get the bigger wheels, which is just a lot easier to ride. You're able to shift gears, you have disc brakes and you know, just do the, the spring and shock and you're done. Um, it's just a great bike to ride. Um, we have, oh yeah, we do have um, the, this is a 140 motor stock. We did the BBR 170 kit. So we did the piston, obviously replaced the, the top end. Uh, now it's a 170 and it just, this thing moves. It's, it's a killer bike. I like, I haven't ridden that one yet, but I'd have to say it's gonna be really hard to like that build for the Pro Comp CRF 110 build over the 140, how it is. Just cause it's a bigger bike, the wheels aren't as small. So it's just gonna be an easier bike to ride and probably faster. And so that's another thing too that we have coming up. That'll be a treat for you guys. So subscribe. Um, we're gonna be taking these on my pit bike track and competing each bike and giving me the pros and cons of each bike where they stand. So lap time um, and just overall what we like about them. So I'm really curious to see how much faster the CRF Pro Comp bike is going to be compared to just doing, you know, suspension mods on a stock CRF 110 and then comparing those to this bike. Um, I think it'll be cool. I think it'll be cool. Um, you know, we're always having guys that are super competitive over my house on the track. Um, so we'll put the fastest guy on probably the stock CRF 110 and then put the slowest guy on like a bike like this and then it should be pretty well matched. So uh, we'll see. 
But uh, anything else, Massimo, that you want to touch on? You covered it all. You went through a lot, and all the questions that I had, you answered. So. All right, good. I love it. That's but if a anybody good else, yeah, if anybody else has questions, comments yeah, yeah, below. Yeah, comment below, and uh, let us know your input. Let us know what bars you're running. Let us know what mods you're doing. Um, you know, the biggest thing for me in the channel is I just want to get content out there that people haven't, not necessarily done already, but just that will help all of us because when you're like me that don't have a lot of experience in building pit bikes or racing them or things like that, I mean, there's probably 10 year olds that could run circles around me on what mods to do and the right bars and this and that. I am, I'm clueless when it comes to that. So I'm, I'm having to learn to do it, learning by trying things out. And so we just wanna reduce that for guys in the future that are watching this content to be like, oh, yeah, Charlie said these bars, that's the best bars for this height and this and that. Just makes it so much easier for people because I love YouTube, I love Googling stuff, but if I could find something like this months ago, it would have saved me time from buying five different sets of bars and finding what works and flows for, for me and feels right and what you're trying to emulate, you know? For me personally, I want to try and emulate the full-size bikes because anytime I could get that feel from a big bike to a small bike and still have a lot of fun. That's what I want to do because I want to be able to cross pollinate from this bike to another bike and still have the same feel even though I'm on a smaller geometry style bike, if that makes sense. Uh, well, stay tuned guys. I know there's a lot to consume. I ramble a lot and go all over the place sometimes, but it is, it is what it is. This is our first take on this and only take on this and I think we hit it off really well. Um, yeah, until next time. Subscribe and stay along for the ride. We'll see you soon.